What's up guys, this is Coach Donnie from Elevate Yourself, where we change lives through volleyball, training, and inspirational content. Welcome to my volleyball coach reaction to 243 Saiyan Boys High School Volleyball Team Anime. If you're new to this channel, I'm a volleyball coach, volleyball player, and personal trainer who provides volleyball tutorials, jump training videos, and other cool volleyball content. For those who've been watching all my other Haikyuu reaction videos, I just finished season four. I was about to do the top 10 favorite moments from season four, as well as my all-star Haikyuu team, but I wanted to spend a little more time thinking about my favorite moments as well as who I was gonna select for my all Haikyuu team. So I'll be releasing that video next week. And in the meantime, I've been waiting to react to another volleyball anime, 243. One thing I wanna do before we start is going into 243 without any preconceived notions, and I'm gonna try my best not to compare Haikyuu and 243. I'm gonna have the same perspective of just analyzing the anime quality, storytelling, and of course, volleyball skill and knowledge. Is it appropriate for me to say, let's get this 243 party started? Let me know in the description box how you want me to start introing these episodes. I'm assuming this little intro here is a new animation studio. Ooh. This is an intense intro. That's pretty sick. That was a cool. All right, we gotta rewatch that sequence. Electric guitar, good sound effects. I like the panning camera, triple block, crush into the seam. Okay, animation is pretty good. This is definitely more modern in terms of like these panning. Wow, this is a really good intro. We gotta watch that again. All right, let's analyze his passing technique here. So his body is low, knees bent forward, shoulders rotated forward. Those are all the great elements that you wanna do for passing. You wanna have a slight forward lean and you definitely wanna shrug your shoulders forward to get a little bit more reach in your platform. One thing I would critique about his technique is you don't want your thumb to fold over. So you see his right thumb's kind of folding over. As much as possible, you want your thumbs and palms to be parallel so you have a symmetrical platform. I do like that they are using the new Mikasa ball and that just makes the anime feel a little bit more modern. In terms of the illustration quality, it's been pretty decent so far. The hardwood has a very realistic, varied pattern for the general hardwood patterns that we see. And of course, the shoes he's wearing look like some standard A6 shoes, which is probably one of the most popular volleyball shoes out there. Although, because this is a Japanese anime, I'm surprised they're not using Mizunos. I'm gonna be pausing a lot in the intro because there are some really cool sequences there. All right, I have to make one Haikyuu comparison. When I'm looking at his setting technique, they have illustrated his setting technique better than Kageyama's. Now, I'm not gonna make the comparison, at least not yet, between who's a better setter, between this guy and Kageyama, but when I was watching how Kageyama's animated setting, his hands were spreading wide like this, and that is bad setting technique. It looks cool for like a flashy style of setting for the anime, so I understand why they did that, but it's not very accurate. Here, he's actually forming the ball with his hands and then pushing through the ball and you want your palms and fingers to kind of follow through and face where you're gonna be setting. So good technique here. I know I said I wasn't gonna compare Q and this one, but I felt like that was appropriate because I'm not necessarily saying which anime is better. I'm trying to compare the animation styles. Man, that was cool. We got three blockers kind of zooming in and that camera pan there. So we got that one, two, three. It kind of reminds me of those moments when you have a character in an RPG where they're like about to cast a spell or a special move and then they have like a still image of sliding in and then all these lines going super fast to look like they're flying or doing something really intense. So it's really refreshing to see some of these video game style animation elements in this anime here. And then we got the camera panning as this person is about to jump here, which is really hard to do, by the way. Imagine not only do you have to animate a very dynamic movement of the foot hitting the floor and then cushioning. If we play this in slow motion, we see that the ball of the foot is hitting the floor first and then the heel versus just 
stomping down like that. And then you have to animate the push off. Not only does the shoe have to change shape, the wrinkles are different. Let's see if they animated the shoelace and the ankle bone because that's what's going to make it feel a little bit more real. The shoelace actually starts top and it kind of flops down to show the gravity of the body hitting the floor because when something is hitting the floor fast, there's usually going to be other elements like the clothes and the shoelace that are a little bit delayed and that's how you communicate speed. So we got a really nice animation of the shoelace, panning camera, and then exploding up there. Oh, and then those hands sealing there. Let's look at this blocking technique. The wrists are not bent forward. And this is another comparison I'm gonna to make to Haikyuu that I've mentioned many times in my Haikyuu reaction videos. That's another area that Haikyuu does not animate that realistically. When you're blocking, you don't want to have your wrist like this. This is a great way to injure your fingers because the ball is going to contact perpendicular to your fingertips. If you want to press over, the only time you do this, if you know you're already on top of the ball and the set is tied to the net and you're just trying to get on top and around. But for most blocking technique, you actually want to do the opposite. You want to break your wrist slightly and then try to press a little bit with your fingers here. Break your wrist as in like bend it back slightly. This will help pr protect it. Press over with your forearms, but flex your hands back just a little bit. And here we see the finish with the fingers, but the wrists are mostly straight. A little bit forward bend is okay if you jump really high, but definitely not like this. And you see how each finger is drawn at a different angle. I mean, look how realistic that is. Look like I'm doing some gang signs here, trying to find the right angle on the camera. Okay, that's better. But you look at that, you see how my finger goes forward. Instead of like a hamburger helper, <laughs> unrealistic hand, this definitely got some character to the fingers. So this animation quality is really great and every time the ball hits the hands you got that impact white lines kind of emanating from that every time so i'm really impressed so far although one thing i have to say to make it even more realistic even if you're a strong blocker there is a little bit of pop back when someone hits hard into the block. So that's one thing I would have animated a little bit better is just a little bit movement of the arm to show the impact of the ball, but also you feel the block. Like the physics are a little bit more accurate that way. By the way, if you're new to this channel and you came here because you're a fan of 243, I also studied animation and illustration in college. I'm also an art teacher, so I have a little bit of knowledge in terms of the animation tricks, how to effectively draw some of the physics or really animate some of the physics. So that's why I'm commentating in such detail here. But man, you see those, those white lines going from there. That's like the universal frustration sound. Man, that was some great passing technique. Honestly, I did not expect myself to pause it this much at the beginning. So another cool animation, you see that the defender is sliding on her knees or his knees and angling his platform. And you see that really good spacing between the platform and his hips. You want your platform to be away from your hips for good control. You rarely want to pass on top of your hips unless you're really absorbing some of the shock, but platform away from the body good passing or really digging technique here. Oh, another crush block. Is this the same sequence animated multiple times? I like how there's just this mental dialogue going on. Ooh, that's some good ball bounce animation here. All right, so really good diving technique. You see how he's diving a little bit on his side and arm is extended and then your legs will naturally kick up to counterbalance this forward motion. So when you're diving, don't try to consciously kick your legs back, even though it looks cool. Let that be a natural reaction and it doesn't always happen. Sometimes your legs will just be super flat. I love good ball bounce animations. To me, that's like the sign of a good animator. Kind of slows down. It varies the timing of the ball. Oh, I love it. You're on the bench and you're trying to stay warm just in case you get put in. That's also really realistic. Macy Academy? Why is he answering the phone in the middle? Uh oh. Definitely don't want to be answering the phone in the middle of a volleyball game. How's an intense intro? That was a very, very well animated, very exciting intro here. I'm excited to see a new intro with some cool volleyball technique and learn a new song here. 
We got a female vocalist. Say in high school boys volleyball. 2.43. That's the height of the net in meters. 2.43 meters. So it looks like it's a lot of men's height stuff. One thing I, I notice about Japanese cartoon or anime is, is they show a lot of seasons. This is very dynamic, like camera movement. Like there's a lot of panning and up and down movement as people are diving and doing athletic movements. That's really challenging to do. You are animating in like 4D. Oh, we do have another person in glasses here. Man, that ball spin with that pattern. Ball compression, did we just see some ball compression here? Oh, I paused it perfectly. This is one of the coolest ways to illustrate power. And actually, if you play a spike in slow motion, you might think this is just some like fantastical anime trick. They have exaggerated a little bit more, but when you're hitting really hard, the ball does momentarily compress and take the shape of your hand and then goes away from there. And these little ripples help communicate almost like the energy waves that are coming from the contact. And then you got that classic anime white swirl cloud when people are like charging the ground and then jumping up and then they leave this this cloud of power or smoke but you if you've been following my channel you know how much i like that ball compression and a very well illustrated reflection from the ground on that hardwood and these are straight up asic shoes i remember watching haikyuu they kind of had like a mysterious want like fake asics pattern but these are just straight up asics design shoes so i wonder if they were a sponsor of this anime if you know let me know in the comments because to me that's like very fascinating business stuff that is not good blocking posture you don't want to stand on the net with your arms wide like that pretty so far pretty fluid animation that intro song was pretty cool, pretty catchy. That was some you know, some crazy running. Chica. Oh no, a little little friends growing up together. They have to separate. Alright, now I gotta start remembering names. We got Uni and we got Chica. Yeah, okay, we gotta watch that car again. Now I know some of the more modern animes, they use computer animation to calculate the physics just because it, it looks smoother and it's a little cleaner. It doesn't feel as natural though, because you can tell when someone's animated by hand. There's kind of like this organic imperfection that is nice. This car, I can't really tell. I think it's hand animated, but what's really great about this car is not only is it driving towards you, it's also turning and it's also bouncing up and down based on the snow. Right. If you've ever driven in snow, surfaces are very uneven. And another great sign of good animation is creating atmosphere without showing atmosphere. Instead of just showing that it's snowing, you have to make the objects around it interact with the atmosphere like it's snowing. So you see how it's shaking and kind of turning on the bumps of the road. Man, I remember when I was their age, and you met a good friend. Everyone felt like a best friend that you hang out with. So it was sad having to move. I moved eight times, by the way, when I was a kid. My dad was like really big into investing houses. Luckily, it was all in, in the same nearby cities. Four-eyed shrimp who's bad at sports. I wonder if that's kind of like the baseline of this anime where you have this unathletic kid with glasses that ends up being a great volleyball player. <laughs> of course, we got some short skirt peaks. I wonder if there's any nudity in this anime. It's not because I hope there's nudity. Am I the only one that gets, I feel like it kind of ruins the experience? Unless that's part of the story. But sometimes I just feel like a lot of animes, they just show nudity just for the sake of it. Not because it's truly moving the story forward.
Hmm, is he still fantasizing about his ch childhood friend? Oh, this, okay, this must be Chica. And the other person must be Uni. Oh, I loved doing that when I was a kid, trying to challenge yourself and just skip steps. Just to, the excitement. Okay, Chica with the glasses. Oh, he looks too cool for school. Reminded me of somebody. Uh-oh. Well, if they haven't seen anyone, each other in a while, maybe he didn't recognize him. I'm not going to say, but there is another blonde person with glasses who is a little quiet and too cool for school. Ooh, okay, so two people playing volleyball. Oh, he gets a sit. Wait, who's Kuroba? His friend. Okay, the guy with glasses must be pretty serious. Because if he's already asking what position, that means he's pretty experienced, especially in high school. Uh, I've, I've heard that before. People just joining a volleyball team or sports team just to put it on their college resume. <laughs> yeah, I wonder why he's not recognizing his buddy. This is a great illustration. If we zoom in on the couches, you see the wear and tear. And then on the walls, you see patches of brown to show the dirt. It really tells the story of how this is kind of like a rundown, maybe not major city type, but maybe out in the country or maybe the suburbs where people spend a lot of time at home and not really out in the lights and doing fun city stuff. Unless this is another childhood friend here. Ooh, he's eating Pocky Sticks? Oh, there's definitely some really yummy Pocky Sticks in the uh, Tokyo Treat Boxes, which we'll talk about soon. His Pops was really from Tokyo. Maybe he's talking about his grandpa? Okay, so the guy with glasses moved away, and Chika stayed here the entire time, so now he's moving back. I wonder what happened though. I mean, some people do change after 10 years growing up, growing up somewhere else. Oh, they're gonna show some food, another sign of someone's skill. Okay, run down sign. So this must be kind of like a small town. Ooh, fingers taped, ready for volleyball. That means he's serious. Oh, so he call, almost called him by his first name, but he corrected himself. One thing I remembered from the last anime is calling people formally by the last name is more respectful. So I just don't know who this guitar guy is. Maybe it's a mutual friend. Okay, so someone that they also grew up with. Uh, okay, so Chika is, does remember everyone. He's just not. Dang, he is direct. It's very similar to someone we know. <laughs> direct and rubs people the wrong way. I think it would be interesting to learn where Chica moved to and then learning what his experiences were that made him be... Oh yes, finally some volleyball type made him be come that way. That is a routine, especially middle blockers. So I wonder if he plays middle, wrapping your fingers because you, your fingers get beat up just from blocking so many balls. 
Okay, another good anime there, or animation. You see when he's bouncing the ball, his shoulders kind of shrug with it. Movement is full body, right? A lot of animators, they just animate just the section that they're focusing on. Even though we are only focusing on the ball bouncing, don't just animate the wrists, arms, fingers, and the balls. You can even show the knees kind of flexing or shaking a little bit and the hair moving, but everything should be full body. Every frame, some line should move most of the part. Yeah, there we go. Oh, he's got his jump serve too. Oh, left-handed, huh? Maybe he plays right side hitter. And he's here just to practice by himself. I wonder why they darken the screen when he's about to jump serve. Spike Solver. Spike Solver. With the basketball team. I like that the women's basketball team is not tolerating a male sport or male team or athlete trying to encroach on their space. If you're a female athlete out there, I know there's some douchebags out there that just think because you're a female that, oh, I could just take up the space or even at the gym. Own your space, stand up for yourself, set some boundaries, and don't be afraid to push back when people treat you like that, especially some of those douchey male athletes. Yeah, go off in the corner. Let's see how the Chica responds. Interesting. Oh no, don't tell me this guy's gonna try to catch up to him. Even the story is intriguing so far. I think it's interesting that we do start off with somebody who is left handed. <laughs> You don't have any friends. Ooh, he got him back. I'm curious what Uni's skill level is like. So true. This is one of the truest statements. There's no excuse not to be a very good server, regardless of what level you play at, because serving doesn't require a partner. You can all you need is open space and a ball or just a wall and serve tons of times. I developed my jump serve and I feel like I have a pretty good jump serve. I developed that because there was a wall at the back of our gym. People use it for tennis, but I used it for volleyball. And after practice and before practice, I would just toss to myself, I would just serve. The funny thing is I would actually toss to myself trying to practice spiking. I actually didn't know that jump serving was a thing because playing in high school in the early 2000s, not many people jump served. I think honestly, I was like the only person who jump served, but I kind of accidentally taught myself how to jump serve because I learned how to just self toss and work on my spiking form that way. All right, we finally get to see some of the skill practice. Got your obligatory stretches, even though you should be jogging and doing some dynamic warm ups so you don't injure yourself. Ooh. A little bit watery eyes. <laughs> there you go. That's it. I like. I, I kind of like Chica so far. Oh, we got some education here. Sport where six players connect. We're going to take a little break from 243 episode one and talk about some of my favorite partners. Sakura Co and Tokyo Treat, which are monthly subscriptions where you get to have access to traditional Japanese snacks or more modern Japanese snacks straight from Japan. Every week you get a new variety, so let's see what's in this box here. You guys know I'm addicted to the buns, so I'm gonna try out this sweet bun. It says natural yeast bread, and since I cannot read Japanese, I have no idea what the flavor is. If you can read Japanese, let me know in the description box what this means, but let's see what it tastes like. And the Sakura Co box does come with a variety of teas that you can eat these snacks with. It is a little green, so maybe a little bit of matcha flavor. 
very soft, lightly chewy, and does have that hint of matcha. And that's something if you really love green tea flavor and matcha flavored stuff, Sakurako snacks are perfect for you. And I personally like to dip their breads and their cookies in the green tea that it comes with. Now for a more modern selection, I'm choosing this one because the packaging is super cute. Pandoro says melon. So I'm assuming it's gonna taste something like a melon cracker. Probably sweet, shaped like a panda. I actually broke it in the process of opening it. Typical me. Wow, that's a really unique flavor. It's like a butter cookie with a pretty strong melon taste, but it's not overpowering. I've never had a melon flavored cookie. If you want to try your own authentic Japanese snacks from Sakurako or Tokyo Treat, use my discount code and link below to get $5 off your first order and join me in enjoying these snacks as we watch these amazing volleyball animes. I like how they have those little intermittent educational moments, although they should pause it for a little longer and have some fun animations with that. <laughs> I don't recommend static stretching like this though before the warm up. Dynamic just means you kind of bounce into those stretches to make the tissue more elastic and to get blood flow. Because what happens if you static stretch, meaning hold a stretch for too long, you actually relax the muscle and you're not going to be as explosive. 173. I think I'm 173. 5 foot 10 inches. Or my 172 centimeters. Not that tall. Ooh, 175. So this guy's taller than me. Okay, they're already starting to become friends. Okay, so this guy's my height. He looks a lot taller though. Oh, he's a setter. Left hand is setter, pretty deadly. That means you could spike on the net easily. All right, this this peppering animation is okay, but they're just kind of recycling it, so it gets repetitive. All right, one thing I don't recommend that they're doing right now is standing when you're passing. When you're passing free balls and just kind of warming up, it's really easy to get lazy with your technique. But in my opinion, every time you practice bad technique, it's going to make it harder for you to undo that later. So especially in the warm up, get your mind and your body warmed up with good mechanics so you don't have to think about that later. Because if you get lazy with your technique, then you're going to have to think about what you're doing in the game here. So his body should be lower when he's passing. Knees bent a little bit more. Ryo. Ah, we got people trickling in the gym to try to practice in volleyball. Yes, three people. And also, you see how they're separating their, their arms when they're passing. You want to keep your arms pretty close together the whole time. Oh, that was some good. Oh, we got a setter and hitter. What? That's it? They're not going to do more reps? Oh, they're bringing some more of their team in. All right. Now we got a game going. <laughs> okay, so I remember they said that... Okay, okay Chica's telling them nicely to how to play. Okay, so this is like a beginner. I like that. He's giving them some instruction. So this is where the proportions are a little off. If Chica is 173 centimeters, which is roughly 5 foot 10, that's my height, his head is way too high relative to the net. Even from like a downward camera angle, which is a slightly downward, for me, my hand goes up to the second to last square, and right now his head goes up to the second to last square. That means he should be like 200 and two 203 centimeters or like six what seven feet tall he's definitely not that tall so some of these proportions are off and i think it gives this false perception of skill because when you're that tall you're expecting to be this big but i'm curious what his height looks like when they're actually playing so there's a and not the best uh proportions i love these spiking sound it just sounds like like whacking whacking I don't know, it's like a sofa or punching bag. One month later, that's fast. Let's see what the progress looks like. 
so this is a good passing technique arms together except they're animating it a little bit off the ball is touching the platform and then they're moving the arms what's actually happening in volleyball is you actually are supposed to meet the ball not only does that visually look better but that's actually better technique so you see the other guy in white <laughs> he's kind of passing after the ball that's not physically possible <laughs> you got it backwards you fool okay let's see oh we got some technique going on when you're up at the net this is cool I like that they're going straight into some of the explanations and um, education right away you're kind of giving your fan base some initial knowledge so they can appreciate what's going on in the game Ah, he's able to deduce all that from just one month of seeing him play. I wonder if he's going to be the player coach for this school team because it's just a club. <laughs> it's funny how his personality is so black and white. Reminds me of somebody. I wonder if he's sarcastic too. Or cheeky. What is he eating? Is that a bread? I thought we were going to see some food earlier. I guess not. I like that Chica is like really driving the competitiveness of this program. And I can see how this is laying the groundwork for an incredible improvement journey that we're going to see with this team. This is a very true statement too from Chica. I'm kind of liking him. He's pretty black and white and he is very serious about just wanting to get better and that's okay. I think sometimes when you're younger, people feel almost embarrassed about getting too into something. And so when you express that passion or express that commitment and trying to get other people on board, people look at you weird and say, Ugh, why are you so serious? It's like, dude, you should be supporting that. Right? You shouldn't be wasting time doing random things that aren't going to move you forward or give you true happiness. And this is a very true statement because you have to always have some type of competition or some end goal where you get to present what you're working on versus just training randomly. I don't think you can really just go to the gym or go to volleyball practice and make significant improvements unless you're actually trying to have a goal or prepare for an event. If you have something to train for, you're going to be much more motivated to be consistent and seek improvement. If you have no context to what you're doing, it's just going to be random, you're going to get frustrated and there's going to be no improvement which is discouraging and you're not going to train anymore. I want to do some matches, good. Oh man, I love that he's taking charge of this team. An advisor. Okay, so everyone's smoking, so maybe that's telling the story that these people are from maybe like a not the wealthiest pe town and everyone's picking on him because he's from a wealthy family wonder why they're teasing him probably just out of envy because he comes from a wealthy family but maybe these are the other high schoolers that are okay now they're just straight up yeah, I like that. I think it's interesting that piercing, smoking, and tattoos in a lot of Japanese anime are often associated with people that are a little rough around the edges. I think that's also true in American culture, but like that stereotype, I, I see it more prevalent in some of the animes I watch. Is it just me, or is that a popular character type? It's more than a game. 
ジになってんじゃねえやろなちょっユリちゃんなんかお付き合いかったのは悪かったって春休みはあ、そうです guys friends with that group 毎日やるわけやねえやろ so now he is torn between does he want to play volleyball or does he want to hang with his regular group of friends Ah, these guys are pressuring him. Interesting that they use the word ain't. I want the, wonder what the Japanese equivalent of the word ain't is. Oh, cousins. So, not only are they high school friends, but they are blood, they are connected. Wait, what did he just say there? Oh, I'm sure I'll get bored of volleyball soon. So, he's just trying to say it to not upset his original group of friends. Yes, I like it. Make him make a choice on how he wants to spend his time. This is a cool take. Like, these are real, real decisions that high school players have to make. Are they going to choose between being better at volleyball or friends? Oh, we finally get to learn why Chika came back. Let's see. You reap what you sow. This is building up the drama. Wait a minute, this better not be just like a... Another genius setter story type. I hope not. I hope this is not just a, a cookie cutter of Haikyuu. I'm not compare. I didn't mention Haikyuu too often yet. So another serious personality. Who's bossing people around at his old school. Just gonna leave it as it is. Just gonna try to enjoy it as it is. No relation. And all the mothers calm down. Wait, are they saying that the grandpa was in the hospital? Oh, shoot. Wow. This is real, by the way. I know this is just a game, but in any aspect, when someone pushes somebody too far emotionally or mentally, and you don't back off of them, you could really break somebody. And that's why it's really important to be careful about how you speak to somebody, read body language. Not to say you can't push people to be better, but it's really tempting, especially if you're a competitive person, to be consumed by your own selfish desire to win. And I do say selfish because it is important to want to win, but you don't want to take people down in the process of doing that. So this is, this is pretty real. Wow, he tried to take his own life. That's intense. Railroad tracks. I wonder what the, the imagery behind the railroad tracks is. Oh, we got some volleyball sprinkled in there. When we think of railroad tracks in terms of the U.S., like what that refers to, kind of think of maybe endless road, people walking on this lonely road. And unfortunately, it is associated with suicide too. So I wonder if that's a reference to that person here. I mean, people laying on the train tracks, right? But the drawing animation is actually very good so far. And we got all these characters that we don't know who they are yet. Maybe future volleyball players of this current high school team. I don't want a wish to end just as a wish, but I know I'm going to live with that feeling. I'm not sure what that means exactly. <laughs> that was a cool image of someone in a robe with a glowing volleyball head. 
I do like this modern style of, of animation though, probably because it is a little bit newer. Here are my immediate thoughts to episode one. I'm actually thoroughly impressed with the animation, the action sequences, and the storytelling is pretty good. They start off with this mystery as to why someone's in the hospital. Then you got these players thinking about, I'm on the bench, I wanna be inside the game. And then you got someone crushing it against a triple block. And then you have one of the main characters coming in demanding that people get ready for volleyball. So you already have someone who's really serious about volleyball, which is exciting for me because I like to see people serious about their sport versus if this was an anime of someone trying to pursue recreational volleyball, I think it wouldn't be as interesting. And I love the flashbacks of when they were kids and they were connected. And then you kind of wonder what happened when they moved away and separated and what stories came from that. So. Definitely a lot of mystery in that first episode, which is what you want. I'm definitely interested in watching more episodes. However, I only have time to do so many reaction episodes a week. So if you guys want me to continue watching some more 243 episodes, let me know in the comments below and I'll do my best to work those in my weekly reaction schedule. Make sure you stay tuned for my next reaction video where I talk about my top favorite moments from season four that were actually voted on by my Patreon members as well as my all Haikyuu team from season four. If you wanna watch any of my Haikyuu reaction videos, make sure you click on this playlist right here and I know you're gonna like this video right here.